I first want to start off by saying praise God that we all could be here and that just that he blessed us onto like he blessed us all the way onto this day. Like thinking back, I one time had a thought like how many of us regret that we followed Christ? Like I was just kind of pondering on that thought and like how many like I've almost never heard a single person who came to Christ and then later in life decided to turn away and then because he regretted being with Christ. Every single time that like like every single story that we hear of people coming to Christ, they always they're always better for it. They're always happier. They're always because Christ he gives them that hope. And Jesus he gives us that life that allows us to go and continue living in this life. And I'd like to start out by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 and down, where Apostle Paul says, For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's hus- uh, husbandry, and ye are God's building. According to the grace which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he, build, how he, build, how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay down, de- for other foundation can no man lay than that than that is laid which is Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it it shall because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work and what sort it is if if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, and he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. And unto this place. So as we were so as we were going, so as we were preparing to come to this church and and I knew that I was kind of and I knew that I had to say a word and I was just kind of pondering in my heart as what like what is our missionary trip about? What can I, like, what can I talk about? What is this missionary about? Why do we go? And kind of the verse that I have highlighted in my Bible is verse 11. It says, For, no, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, our foundation is Jesus Christ. And the reason why I say foundation is because Apostle Paul, he talks here where it goes much deeper than what is on the surface. A lot of people assume is the, is a lot of the lukewarm Christians assume that you come to God, you accept Christ into your heart, you get saved, and then you just continue living your life. You just continue coming to church, making sure that you hear enough sermons, you hear enough gospel songs to where your kind of conscience is just satisfied and to where if you are told that and if you are told constantly that you are going to go to heaven then then you are at peace and you're just living with your life but apostle paul he's not saying that he's saying that for no other for other foundation can no man lay that than that which is jesus christ which he follows with now if any man build upon this foundation okay apostle paul he talks about building upon the foundation of jesus christ he's not talking about just having that foundation and looking at it and just marveling at how beautiful the foundation is just because a lot, because I know in the Slavic community a lot of us work in construction myself included and we know that and we know that a foundation is it's the most important thing to a building but at the same time if it's the foundation that foundation serves no purpose that building it that building has to rest upon of like the building has to be upon a foundation for that for that building to do something and in here where where uh, where uh, Apostle Paul says now if any man built upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble and he says every man's work shall be made manifest and here Apostle Paul is talking about we have received our foundation we have received that which was given to us we believed because faith came through hearing and we believed on Christ. Now, he's, now, he, now he is saying that you, as the one who accepted this foundation into your heart, go out and go build a building. Like the bricks of gold, silver, precious stones. He's saying, go and build yourself a house. He's saying, go and just let your works reflect your faith. Because we all know that 
like I, because I kind of had this question of if we accept Christ through faith, then why is it that like the Bible also puts a lot of emphasis on works? Because we see that the Bible, it doesn't just say faith, 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 and no works whatsoever. The Bible says, like, even in James, he was, like, he was saying that, show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. And the Bible makes it evident that our faith is a reflection of our works. That which we do in our daily lives, that is supposed to reflect our faith. And, and of course, living in America and having and like having uh, emigrated so I kind of like so when we emigrated to America I was seven years old and then I pretty much lived here for I'm 22 so I can't really do the math off the top of my head right now but when like I understood that like just living in this country I see that this country is what Solomon described as vanity of vanities there is so much things that happen in this country that just I'm, I mean, I just take a look at it and like I see that this is pointless, like just the monotony of life, just everything, like it's spinning. We are just caught up in this, you could say, rat race of just of waking up, going to work, and going to church after work if it's on a certain day, and then, go, and then maybe having a couple hours for kind of, and then kind of having a couple hours for ourselves, followed by waking up and repeating that you know, with like maybe occasional breaks on the weekend to where we can go either to the lake or just, or just kind of relax and just kind of take some time off. But, but Apostle Paul, he says that we have to, like daily, we have to build upon this foundation. And I remember I was in a Bible study and we got towards the topic of, we, so the topic was full surrender to Christ. And we were discussing how can you fully surrender to Christ and still live your life? We were, I mean, it was a, actually a really good discussion, and the, conclusion that, and the conclusion that we came to was to fully submit yourself unto Christ. It doesn't mean to go out in the middle of nowhere and build yourself a shack, live really modestly, pray to God every single morning you wake up like those monks, like, uh, like uh, those monks back in the day. When, Christ, when uh, Christianity was just founded, a lot of people, they wanted to they wanted a closer relationship with God, so they were seeking greater devotion. So what they did was, they kind of banded together, they built monasteries, they lived the most simple lives, like, they lived the most simple lives, they, they woke up, tried to seek God every single day, they went, did their chores, took care of farm animals, planted food. At the end of the day, they would come, like, they would, like, come back to church and still see God, and, but, which it's not bad and all, but when we think about it, how many like how is that practical for any of us? We live in a, we live in a country that requires us to just be involved in everything, and and kind of what we came to the conclusion was living in Christ, living upon that foundation means no matter what you do, you have Christ in you. We were talking about, let's say you're looking to take a vacation, or let's say you're looking to go camping. Like, how do you take camping and just bring Christ with you? And one good example that one of the people at that, at that, uh, at that uh, Bible study kind of brought up was, you know, it's like if you're going camping, invite someone who's not a Christian, right? Like, just invite them, like, just invite them. And then when you guys are going camping, just talk to them about Christ. Just just slowly build those stones. Just talk to them about Christ. If you are ever in a supermarket, ever in a line, don't be afraid to say God bless you because a lot of times when people sneeze, we say either bless you or even then, you know, or like even then sometimes we don't even say that. But instead of saying bless you, why not say God bless you? Or when we are, you know, just when we are, let's say, at a drive through or just going sever, like try to always say either God bless you or just like something that would always reflect that that your found that uh, that like that your foundation is Jesus Christ, and the reason why this was kind of uh, the reason why this kind of almost you could say hit a little bit home was uh, a little story that happened in Ukraine was uh, we were in a city, Vosnysiansk. I don't know if anybody here knows it, but uh, in there, so we were doing a so we were doing a five day camp, and on the first day. I started talking with, uh, I was talking to a few grandmas. We met one, uh, 
and then I met one grandma who was uh, so this is a really tri this is a really kind of tragic story, but essentially what happened was the grandma she was taking care of her of her uh, grandson, and because what happened was so the so the boy was born into a family where the mother was uh, so the father was a drunk, and then the mother was just kind of like trying to keep the whole family together. And the grandma said that what happened was uh, one day the father came home really drunk, like above, like I mean he, I mean he just came home super drunk, and he ended up killing the mother. So the boy was left with a drunk father, and then and then uh, the grandma said that about six or seven months later, the father again was because he was drunk, he was drinking and driving. He crashed and he died. And so essentially the boy was left as an orphan and he went to go live with his grandparents. And the reason why I kind of brought up the whole where it says for, for other foundation can no man lay that which is Jesus Christ is because when we go to Ukraine, that is what we preach. We preach as where we preach that foundation for, 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 like for those kids to have hope in the future. We preach to those kids so that they will not repeat the mistakes of their fathers. So that, so that these kind of stories can dwindle, dwindle less and less and so that we can have more stories of people who come to Christ, who do not regret it, who continue following in Christ's footsteps, who continue to bring more people in. Because this life, this life it's just, I mean, if you ask any person, this life is great, but at the same time, this life, it's very difficult. and just. And and being in like and just being in Ukraine, a lot of those kids they do not have any hope. And when we go and we preach to them, like just as Paul says, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise as uh, as a wise master builder, like I'm not calling myself a wise master builder, but when I go there, I try to spread the gospel to the best of my abilities, that which I have understood, that which was like the salvation that was revealed unto me. That is what, like, where, as Paul said, be followers of me as I am of Christ. So we must take that example and also try to be wise master builders to the best of our, to the best of our abilities that God has, like, that God gives us. Is we have to try to daily, is to show that, like, is to show that, like, reflection, show that hope. Because when I, the first year that I was in Ukraine, I was almost taken back by how much lack of hope there was in Ukraine. Like, if I, like, I just kind of think about it that if I was living in Ukraine, I probably would not, like, truthfully speaking, it'd be very hard for me to still be a follower of Christ just because, a, because just because I would see the, like, everything that's happening in the country and I would have very little hope that there is like, and not like, and I like, and I and like, and I would just have very little hope that my life can be full of purpose, meaning, happiness. But, but it's like when, but it's like when we go there, we try to kind of show that to the kids, to show them that there is hope out of like, to show them that there is hope out of this life, that they do not have to perpetuate the sin, and all of the effects that come with sin. We show them that there is a way to break that, like to break that, you could say, line so that they can continue living as a new being in Christ and continue spreading that peace and that hope to everybody that's around them. And, I mean, yes, it's needed in Ukraine, but I also see that it's needed everywhere. The human condition, it doesn't change from country to country. It is universal because we, because we all came from one Adam and from one Eve. And that which, and that which, Abel inherited and throughout we are all we all have inherited the same condition so so I just kind of wanted to like touch up a little bit on our missionary on, on our ministry but also kind of encourage every single one of us that we have to understand that do not just take your foundation and keep it close to your heart like use the foundation build upon it like Jesus Christ he says that like he said that my food is to do the will of him that sent me. Whereas like, because uh, I was uh, kind of thinking about like, what is spiritual food? Like, do we just, you know, like at the end, I, like at the end of the day, do we just come home, 
have you could say like have like you could say our spiritual fill of five chapters from you know from like the book of Corinthians and your spirit is satisfied like that's kind of the train of thought that I used to have but then I but then like but then uh, I realized that true spiritual food is doing the will of God because when you do the will of God what ends up happening is God is God opens up things to you that you never thought of before he kind of gives you a different perspective on life. He teaches you because when you make a mistake, because God will be there to pick you up and to show you what happens, like, and to show you like how to do it correctly the next time. God, he's there, he, beca- like, he is our heavenly father who wants to raise his children. He wants to see them grow. He wants to see all of us spiritually grow. And, and just kind of before I finish up, I just wanna, again, kind of, touch on the point of prayer where probably the most thing that we need is prayer is we need prayer warriors to back us up because because when you're dealing with these kids a lot of times you have to show them love for for the kind of period of time where it's very difficult like we like we would have several kids where when you would like on the first second third and possibly even fourth day they were still very closed off. They just do not want to like open themselves up just because again, like the whole like bitterness of life already got a hold of them and they just do not want to open up themselves. But but it's that constant showing of love that we have to show to them that is that is kind of what like that's kind of what shows them who God is. Because in the because in the book of Romans it says that the goodness of God leads people to repentance. It's not taking a Bible and just, and just like showing them all the rules, all like everything that God commanded us to do. The first step is to show them that love, is to show them that there is hope, that there is, that, uh, like that they do have a future for, like for a better life. And I just wanted to encourage everyone that to please pray for us because it is not easy. It's, it is not easy. I'm gonna say that off, like, I'm gonna say that like right off the top is, it is not easy because when you go in there, you are met with resistance. And when you are met with resistance, that just makes the battle that much more meaningful because you know that if there is resistance, then whatever it, like, then whatever it is you are doing, that it, is, that it is the will of God. So I just wanted to encourage everyone to please pray for us because it would be a huge benefit as well as, as, well as it would be a small stone to, that would be added to your foundation. So. Praise be to God. Amen.